this is our tissue. Okay, so say we're talking about these cells in a tissue here. What they really need is oxygen, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, uh, and salts and things like that. This is what we do not like. Call it a blur, I don't want that. So these are just the cells of any tissue and this is always what it's going to be. Now what we've got here is we've got our um, capillary. So at this end it's the arteriole. And so this end, this has just come from the heart. Now because we have a closed circuit, the blood cells can't come out of uh, the capillaries. You can see these are the tiny gaps that we call the, um, the pores between the capillary cells. So this is your squ um, squamous endothelium, so your cells are really, really thin, so it's like short diffusion dif distance and all that stuff. But your red blood cells can't get out, and s neither can your other stuff. So what else have we got in here? So we've got all these nutrients that we um, want over here, plus we've got um, plasma proteins. And these are things like um, the stuff that's used to help blood clot when you've got a cut or um and other sort of roles i think there's like a thousand different proteins that you find in blood plasma so loads of loads and loads of stuff you've got you've got white blood cells lymphocytes so we've got all this stuff and we've got this stuff but what this what our cells need is all this stuff so how are we going to get the stuff that's in there uh, into here without getting all losing our red blood cells and our white blood cells and stuff like this so what happens is because this has come from the heart, it's at high hydrostatic pressure. So this end here, and this is the venule end. So this is after sort of your blood's gone from your arteries down to your arterioles, down to your capillaries. And now as it goes through the capillaries, it loses the pressure that it got from the heart. So at the venule end, it's got low hydrostatic pressure. I'm just going to write HP because I'm lazy like that. So we're going from artery to... Um, vein so via arterioles and venules and through the capillaries so at this end we've got really high hydrostatic pressure and this end we've got low hydrostatic pressure so because this has got high pressure the fluid is going to tend and then it forms my least favorite word in the whole of biology so this yellow stuff it's the tissue fluid oh tissue fluid your tissue fluid so this has got all the oxygen, the glucose, the amino acids, everything that your cells want, and it means that it, they can ex it then exchanges with um, across the cell membrane by facilitated or um, yeah, facilitated, blah, 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 facilitated diffusion or just plain diffusion, uh, and that um, allows the exchange of oxygen and then CO2 is let out and, and all your sort of your waste products like urea and stuff. So that's where that exchange occurs after the plasma leaves and forms the tissue fluid that bathes the cell what we're left with inside the capillary is so what we've got left in here is we've just got red blood cells plasma proteins also your white blood cells so your lymphocytes so this is going to have a really 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 low water potential and it'll have a low water potential here as well but because this has got such high hydrostatic pressure that goes sort of against the water potential so this has got a more, the hydrostatic pressure has a more important effect than the effect of low water potential whereas at this end, this end, we've got really 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 low water potential I should draw that arrow going here uh, really low water potential and because this is now the venule end we don't have the high hydrostatic pressure we've got sort of low hydrostatic pressure so the actual effect of having a really low water potential means that fluid is more likely to move into the capillary from the tissue fluid because all the cells sort of take in all this sort of the oxygen, the glucose, the um, your solutes, your salts and you're left with sort of a very watery fluid uh, with a slightly higher water potential than that in the capillaries and the reason the capillaries are at such a low water potential is because they've got the plasma proteins as well so they lower the water potential a lot so water then, not water, um, so fluid then flows back into, I'm going to do it in yellow again, into here at the venule end. So at this end it comes out, whee, and at this end it goes in. And when it comes back in now it's got loads of CO2 and urea and not so much of this lovely stuff because the cells have gone, nope, that's for me, yum yum yum, except they don't talk. Uh, but also we've got um, 
the lymph vessels so we've got lots of tissue fluid coming out and it goes back it drains back into the sort of the veins but it also drains into these which are the lymph vessels and now lymph is really really important so we have these things shown here the lymph nodes there there in your armpits and here like all your tonsils all that stuff you thought was pointless and your spleen spleen which is a nice word uh, so that's they're all um and your thymus up here and that's all responsible for producing lymphocytes so your b lymphocytes and your t lymphocytes and sort of along these nodes you've got a storage of these white blood cells which are really important for fighting infection so i'm going to write it in big but i'm going to do a whole video on them because they're amazing so here we've got all the lymphocytes and basically the lymph the main role is to carry sort of excess tissue fluid back up through the body and then it joins in sort of a chest cavity it goes back into the blood so i think it's called thoracic thoracic i don't know how you say it thoracic blah, 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 there it sort of drains back into the blood so you get your excess fluid but it's also responsible for transporting sort of your lymphocytes around the body so all along like i said we've got all along these nodes and they release white blood cells and any sort of pathogens which are in the blood or have drained away from the tissue fluid they drain into the lymph node um into the lymph vessels and then all along at these nodes you've got sort of macrophages and lymphocytes which can then deal with that so it's a, it's important in the immune response to things but the main role is just sort of draining this stuff back up to um to rejoin the blood also it goes via the intestines so it's via the small intestine and it collects lots of fatty sort of acids so it has more fat content than um, your tissue fluid or your actual blood. Basically the two forces acting on the fluid are the osmos osmosis, the osmotic sort of pressure. So here has a higher water potential than in here. So this fluid is going to tend to push back in here because of osmosis and it's got a slight hydrostatic pressure but not as much as here. Here it's going to tend to push out of the capillary because of the high hydrostatic pressure. Now at this end, the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the force of the um, fluid wanting to flow back in by osmosis. So it goes out at this end. At this end, because the hydrostatic pressure has dropped, the osmotic sort of pressure has, uh, has a greater effect. So the effect of this isn't over sort of ridden by the hydrostatic pressure because the hydrostatic pressure is low so over, like the overall net movement is water come well fluid coming in via osmosis um yeah it's quite a pretty picture <laughs>